I'm like really excited to actually uh, invite our second speaker, um, Shivanji, because she was already like at the backstage like for a while. Hey, hey, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Nice, nice. Um, it's kind of funny because, you know, with uh, all of those uh, internet, right, um, meetups, it's kind of easy to get people from different locations, but it's still like a good uh, opportunity for us to actually have somebody like local from Munich, right? Because yeah. maybe at some point we're going to be back to, you know, like yeah. real spaces and we can have like people like asking the questions. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I guess uh, if you would share your screen, right, I can add you to the... Um, to the stream as um, well. So there's like a button underneath for sure. Yeah. Shares. But today's completely fine. I already had like technical issues in the beginning. So entire <laughs> screen or some application entire screen, right? Uh, it depends how you prefer it, right? I mean you can if it's a Chrome window, you can share on the application or you can do like entire screen and after you make it full screen. So it's gonna work out. Mm. Yeah, I think I can see it. So now you can also see it right. Um, yeah. Okay. So if you try to put it, uh, I don't know. Are you gonna show it like this, right? Without full screen. Okay. So I, I let me try full screen. Play mode. Yeah. yeah. It works perfectly. Yeah. With that, uh, I would say the stage is yours, and uh, yeah, have fun uh, telling all those amazing things that you did uh, within uh, mm -hmm. your research group. Okay. So hello everyone. I am Shivangi and I'm a PhD student at TUM, Technical University of Munich. And today's talk is going to be about a recent project that I did with my professor, Professor Mathis, and my industrial advisor, Chris. So this project is about uh, tackling one sort of misinformation that is out there, which is out of context uh, use of images. So let's start. Um, so when we talk about face, fake images, uh, especially on social media, there are uh, basically two uh, main categories. So first is like uh, image tampering, and uh, an example uh, is shown in this image on the left. And here, what you see is uh, what people do is they play around with parts and regions in the image to convey a different message or misrepresent the person. So for example, in this image, the original image was of a student holding a Black Lives Matter banner, but it was tampered such that it says Lincoln was racist. So this is one form of misinformation. Uh, that is, uh, this is one form of image misuse that is used to spread misinformation. And the second form is uh, where people do not uh, tamper or play around with the images. But what they do is they share this uh, image with a claim which is uh, not at all related to it. So for example, uh, in this image on the right, you see that uh, there's a person burning a flag and the original image was uh, from 2016 during some anti-Trump riots. And this was shared in 2018 uh, with a claim that says that people in my great caravan burnt American flag. So uh, this uh, is, also a, a form of uh, sort of misuse of images that people use to spread misinformation. So, and uh, there's been a case study that analyzed that uh, tweets or links or posts that are shared with images uh, receive more attention uh, compared to normal uh, posts and also these kind of posts where like there, there's been image tampering or uh, there's been uh, images that, that are shared with false and misleading claims, they receive more attention compared to uh, the, the genuine image posts. So obviously there's a need to detect uh, these uh, sort of uh, misuse of images. Um, and there are already uh, a lot of methods uh, that basically handle image tampering and um, uh, where they, they sort of detect which region in the image is manipulated and stuff. So with this project, what we are trying to do is we are basically um, trying to cater the, the second misuse of images where the images are legit 
but they're shared with false and misleading claims. Um, so yeah, this project is about or out of context image use where the images are basically genuine and they are shared in false or misleading context. Um, so as an example uh, is, is this image. So this is an image of Obama from 2014 and uh, this image was shared uh, with a uh, text that said that President Obama is in uh, Maryland to learn something about Ebola vaccine. And after the outbreak of COVID, this same image was reshared on Facebook with the claim that, uh, that this person, Obama, is in Wuhan uh, for uh, some bad project. So this is basically the out of context use of images. And with this project, this is what we're trying to det uh, detect. Um, so, and out of context image use can also be classified into two categories. So uh, I will explain uh, the categories with an example. So here you see an image of a patient and the true uh, event that describes this image is uh, given by the text above. So this is actually an image of a patient who is transferred by an ambulance to uh, some infectious disease center in Hong Kong. But uh, this image was reshared uh, with a false claim uh, where it, it, it says that Chinese officials are started killing uh, of, of patients to stop the spread of uh, coronavirus. So one out of context use of uh, images is that the images are shared with completely false claims. And the second is uh, this example. So this is an example of a building. And this building is actually a, a screenshot uh, from a China-based uh, construction website. And this image was reused to spread uh, one uh, misinformation that the, that this image is basically of a hospital in Wuhan that was constructed in a few hours after the outbreak of this new strain. So the claim is partially true in the sense that the hospital was constructed, but this particular image is, is not, uh, this particular image is not of that hospital and it wasn't constructed in few hours so basically this is these are the two kinds of misuse of images when we uh, talk about out of context and that's what we're trying to detect with this project um so the standard uh, thing that comes to our mind is why not collect uh, lots and lots of images and label them and develop some supervised classification method. And to give you an idea, obviously we need huge amounts of label uh, data to build a supervised deep learning model. So for example, uh, when we talk about image classification, people benchmark their methods on ImageNet. And this data set consists of around 14 million images. Um, when we talk about object detection segmentation, uh, then people benchmark their results on MS Coco data set. And this is also a very large scale data set, like 300,000 images with 2.5 million labeled objects. So given the nature of the problem that we're trying to solve, there are um, lots and lots of images uh, shared on uh, social media every day, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, but only a handful of them are used to spread misinformation. And right now, these things are being regulated by fact-checking uh, initiatives like Snopes. So Snopes is a fact-checking website. So, and they basically look at each and every post and um, label them whether it's, a, it's true or whether it's false. Um, so, uh, there is, uh, there are samples available to uh, sort of build a model for this task, but they, the data set is super tiny. 
so to give you uh, an estimate so there are around 300 million photos that are shared on facebook every day and only uh, around 13000 fact checks have been done by this website snopes in total so basically there's a lot of imbalance and uh, we don't have enough uh, training data to train a supervised model for this problem so uh, that's what where we decided uh, that is there a method that uh, we can use these other set of images that are not shared in misleading context that are genuine images with genuine posts and claim and reuse this uh, these images to develop a model for our task so that's the main idea um so we developed a self supervised training scheme and the basic idea is um, we collect a bunch of images and for every image we collect multiple captions and uh, for example this is an image of a train accident and um, so this image was shared with these two captions the first one is talking about uh, that rescue workers at the site of train accident on Great Belt Bridge in Denmark. So this is basically talking about rescue workers. And the second one is the passenger train was stuck by a cargo container in Denmark early Wednesday. So the second caption is talking about passenger train. Similarly, for this image, uh, we, uh, where basically we have a scooter so this image was shared with these two captions uh, electric scooter programs have become popular in crowded cities like san francisco and the other one said that a scooter on the sidewalk in downtown san francisco so both of these captions are talking about scooter so we basically collected such data set where every image is associated with multiple captions um, and the reason behind collecting multiple captions uh, per image was to uh, basically build a model that has sort of understanding in uh, in terms of varying context, varying vocabulary, varying words. Um, and then what we did is, so basically the top two captions that appeared uh, with the image uh, on the left, which is of train accident, are supposed to be positively correlated and the bottom two captions which uh, which are about scooter are supposed to be positively correlated with the scooter image and uh, the captions with which an image did not appear are supposed to be negatively correlated right so basically this is an image of train accident and rescue workers are, are present in this image and passenger train is present in this image so we need to build a model that is basically able to identify these sort of objects in the image similarly for the scooter image um, looking at the caption the model should be able to identify that there is a scooter in the image and uh, I would say that this is like a challenging task compared to like standard image captioning models because there is a lot of information in the caption, but uh, it is not really useful for basically identifying the objects in the image. So the news captions or in the wild, uh, you know, sort of posts on Twitter, Facebook and, and, and media and stuff are very different from standard image captioning models that are used in machine learning. Um, and the reason why we're learning this association is I will explain it later. So this association would later be used to detect out of context use of images so once we train so sorry so first we collected a large scale data set for the task uh, as i said like for every image uh, what we uh, did is we basically collected a lot of images and then we used cloud vision api to do reverse image search for this image and then we collected multiple captions corresponding to the same image on the different websites so uh, in this example this is an image of showing buses 
and this was fact checked by snopes uh, that uh, the which basically said that these are the buses purchased by black lives matter to transport member to riots and um, this image was uh, shared on this website daily hive with a caption that nba champion arrived at disney campus buses were wrapped with black lives matter and this image was also shared on this website cbc where it said that toronto raptors roll into nba bubble in the black lives matter buses um so this is how we collected multiple captions per image um and we basically collected images uh, especially for the topics and keywords where there's a lot of misinformation for example when we talk about uh, elections and environment and i know politics and racism so these are basically some of the areas where there's been a lot of misinformation a lot of uh, out of context use of images so we basically focused on uh, these particular uh, segments and um, we collected around 200000 images for training and then we benchmarked our results on uh, around 2000 images so um for training uh, we did not use any uh, labeled annotations we only use these annotations for our validation set uh, for only for benchmarking only for comparing um and for training basically every image can have variable number of uh, captions so one image can have two captions three captions four captions but for validation we ensure that every image has two captions um and then there's a reason which i'll explain later um so this is how we do our training so basically for training we uh, take the image and two captions uh, we call them matching caption and a non matching caption so matching caption is basically the caption that occurred with this image and non matching caption is simply a random caption from our data set um we use this uh, pre trained object detection model mask r cnn to first detect objects in this image and uh, then we encode the features only for these objects and we be, uh, basically generate 300 dimensional embedding for each of these uh, objects and then what we do is to encode the textual captions we use uh, use embedder so use is universal sentence embedder this is basically a pre trained text embedder and is expected to perform really well on um, out of vocabulary words and news articles uh, text so we use this and then we have like a simple text encoder which is a fully connected layer and uh, we generate 300 dimensional embedding for each of these texts and then now that we have a uh, same dimension for uh, objects and for text what we do is we basically combine them and the way we combine them is with a dot product um and this dot product basically gives us caption object scores and uh, once we have these caption object scores we then apply a max operator to obtain image caption scores so basically identify which object is most important for the uh image uh, corresponding to a given caption so that's what these scores tell us and then we train it with the simple max margin loss where we ensure that the score for the matching caption should be higher compared to the score for the random caption um and let's see how the results look like so once we train once we have trained this model um we expect the model to assign high scores to the objects of interest and low scores that are to the objects that are not at all related to it 
So I have the same example from the previous slides, uh, which is like of the train accident and the scooter image. So let's look at the train example first. So these were the uh, top three objects detected by the model. And um, a positive score is given by the model for the train, which is the accident. And um, negative score is given to this helicopter and to this person. Uh, and obviously, uh, if you look at the top caption, uh, it is talking about the rescue workers at a site of train accident. But uh, it has given a negative score to this person, or, so which is like technically it 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 is wrong, but um, it's it's uh, sort of like a very difficult keyword for the model model to comprehend because it is talking about rescue workers, and had it been maybe a simple word like person or something, maybe the model would have been able to identify it. Um, and the second image is of scooter. So here we have the scooter, the legs of the person, the handbag, and this pole. Um, and both of these captions, uh, as we've seen before, are talking about uh, scooter. So in this case, the model was able to give a positive score to the scooter and negative score to the other objects. Um, and here we have some more examples. So uh, uh, in the previous slide, I showed an the I showed the image with two captions, and both of those captions were basically correct. And now in this slide, the captions that you see in the green are true captions, and the captions that you see in the red are basically the false captions. So. The first uh, image is of like two girls crying and the original uh, caption was that the residents cry outside a reunification center after deadly shooting. And the second caption is uh, also talking about these people. So where it says that the immigration authorities were checking citizenship papers of people affected by mass shooting in El Paso. Uh, so first one is uh, being addressed to residents, which is also these people. And the second one is addressed to people, which is these two uh, girls standing. And um, these are like few of the top objects detected uh, by the model. Uh, like there are cars in the background and then there's this, this person detected. Um, and the model was able to give a positive score to uh, the pe persons and a negative score to the cars in the background. Um, similarly, for uh, this image, a patient transferred to uh, this infectious disease center in Hong Kong, also talking about patient. And then Chinese officials are started killing uh, patients to stop spread of uh, virus. It's also not talking about patients. So these are the top objects uh, detected. And the model is able to give a positive score to this uh, person lying on bed and that the person who's taking him to the wherever. And a uh, negative score to the other objects such as this chair and this handbag and others so uh, we were uh, so with the training strategy that i explained in the previous slide we were able to build like uh, a decent model that is uh, able to correctly identify the relevant objects in the image um and then once we identify the important objects, then at test time, what we do is uh, we basically, uh, so most of the out of context use of images uh, uh, always talks about the same object in the image. So um, for example, in this image, so this is an image of uh, buses and the fake, or the untrue uh, text was uh, that the buses purchased by Black Lives Matter to transport members to riots. And this is talking about buses, although this is a false claim. And the second uh, text says that the 
Toronto Raptors roll into NBA bubble in Black Lives Matter buses. And this one is also talking about buses, but uh, this is saying something different. And this is a true claim. Um, so what we do is we basically take this image and both of these captions to uh, and feed them to our model. And we detect out of context image use. Um, and how we do it, we follow the same guidelines. We take the image, we detect the objects in the image, and then we take both of these matching captions. So basically, as I said, that the, the first matching caption is false and the second matching caption is true. Um, and then what we do is we basically feed uh, them to our trained model and uh we then identify top objects for both the captions um and these are basically the most relevant objects uh for caption one so the most relevant objects for caption one are shown uh in this uh red box and the most relevant objects for caption two are shown in this green box and then what we do is we take an additional pre-trained model to compute sentence similarity or sentence semantics. And then, then what we see is if both of these texts are semantically different and they convey different messages, but what they do is they basically identify same objects in the image, then we say, oh, this is out of context use of images. And otherwise we say that this is not out of context. So this is the main idea uh, for the method. And uh, we basically evaluated this method for different text embeddings. Um, so we used GLA, fast, uh, uh, fast text and uh, use embeddings. And the first column, uh, the second column here, you see the match accuracy. So this is basically the loss that the model was trained with the that the score for the matching caption should be higher than the non-matching and then there was this context accuracy so basically we only evaluate on this we do not train our method for this context loss um and yeah and we achieve about 82 percent uh, accuracy and here k equals to one two three basically identifies that are we talking about top one object top two objects or top three objects so the more objects you consider the more uh, sort of liberty you give the model to make a mistake uh, and your performance also sort of um, uh, increases because there is more possibility to sort of have the same object in the grounding and then we also did one more experiment where we basically evaluated the effect of data set size. And we know that for supervised methods, the bigger models and bigger data sets help, but we wanted to check for this particular use case as well. And we noticed that having a bit bigger data set also helps us improve our model. So using 100% of our data, we got around 73% accuracy, whereas using only 10% of our data, we got around 67%. Um, and then we also compared our method with other uh, rumor and uh, fake news detection methods. And uh, our method is uh, relatively better. And the main reason that this that this approach stands out from the other method is basically we are using objects and rest of them are operating on full images so the, the detecting objects uh, basically helps uh, the model to focus only on the important parts in the image um so uh, this the, this is the story so far. I mean, we're around 82% accuracy, but obviously this is not deployable. No one is can can use this to in real time to de detect these misuses. So obviously one thing uh, that I realized from this project that uh, visual grounding is a challenging task for especially for news captions. So an example, uh, this is an image of a metro. 
and the caption that this image was shared with was that la metro ride offers a small portrait of this sprawling city and this is not directly describing the objects in the image uh, for example uh, the model needs to understand that the metro uh, is a synonym for the word train and um, and identify and ground this object so this is like a very easy task for humans but for models if this is like a very challenging task um, and uh, so and so the model was able to detect like the correct object uh, in this case but yeah it, it, it is difficult uh, for models to basically find out relevant objects from these captions and the second thing is uh, we obviously need a self-supervised method uh, because uh, the supervised data set is very tiny especially for this problem that is basically publicly available so yeah we have very limited number of images that are fact checked and right now i'm using them in my validation set just to evaluate the performance of the model and i'm not training on these few images um and one thing that we used during our model is uh, basically a mask rcnn to detect objects in the image although it was able to detect these cars in the background uh, but the second person uh, who is very clear to us the model missed detecting the, the this person and so um and so uh, using these pre-trained models uh sometimes miss to detect these objects and therefore obviously we need to sort of use like an assembling technique with a variety of models or um come up with something else so that the relevant objects are not missed um second thing is uh, that during training we uh, during test time we were using this a uh, sentence similarity model which is sentence bird and which is shown in this pink color on the right and this is also a model that computes the similarity between the two texts although uh, it is useful but this is also a, a model we cannot uh, get performance beyond whatever this model gives us um because we are using uh, the prediction made by this model as sort of like gold standard so yeah so we need to remove uh, this and come up with something automatic that does this task in the future um and right now we're taking an image and two captions and letting the model predict whether uh, this is an out of context use or not but what we can do in the future is like identify which of the two captions is basically false so that would be actually interesting and that would help the people to use uh, this in real time um so to summarize uh, in this project, we basically proposed a new task of detecting out of context use of images. Um, we created a large scale data set for benchmarking. Um, and we proposed a new self supervised learning scheme to detect out of context use of images. Um, that's, that's mostly from my side. And I would like to thank my advisors and others who basically helped me through in and throughout this project so that's it from my side if you have any questions yeah thank you for amazing presentation and also for providing or building up this like a data set right and uh, mm -hmm. forming like a new task right now i guess like it's uh you know like with machine learning as you already said in the beginning if there is like no data right if there is like no image net competition it's like hard to make any progress right because it's just like uh yeah. your ideas right 
So hopefully like now it's easier. Um, so there were like some questions, but while well, people see writing so, since we like with YouTube stream is a bit like in the future, I will ask mm -hmm. a couple like from my side. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if you're aware. So like OpenAI has this like a clip model, right? When they were like training um, transformers like on text, but also like on images, right? So, you know, it's gonna get basically different part of the image like a uh, true transformer, right? And it's gonna be uh, having like uh, self attention as well. So mm -hmm. I was wondering, if you did try to use something like as OpenAI's clip, right? Because it also would no, allow you. So this was mm -hmm. like a very basic project. So most of this time, most of my time for this project was specially focused on formulating the problem. Like mm -hmm. I, what kind of uh, thing do you want to address, which is like this out of context use and stuff like this, because there, there's nothing out there uh, right now that detects these uses. And the second main effort that we spent was basically on collecting this data set. So like what kind of images you need or where do you collect data from? So algorithmic improvement, yes, this is up for future work and that's what we're working right now. Uh, but yeah, I haven't tried this uh, clip idea uh, or self-attention or anything fancy. So this is right now, it's a very simple, basic model. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. Because like first you need to collect a data set and only after it's yeah. kind of becoming a bigger thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so there is like another question from, um, I guess I can pronounce it as uh, uh, Roscoe, right? And uh, uh, he's asking basic, I mean, that was like a question about before a comment from his side more, hey, uh, is it like a context, right? Or you just like uh, do a binary classification of a positive, like a negative, like a sentiment, right? In the caption. And uh, he's also suggesting basically to take a look uh, um reliability of the speaker, right? Uh, or maybe, I don't know, if you're gonna go like extra well and say, you know, if you have like a multiple, um, messages right you can also try to compare which one is like a bit of like out of the scope on the message level right because sometimes uh just like a pair of text and image right it's like hard to say which one is wrong which one is correct right because exactly, uh, it's yeah. not always the same problem right so to to actually identify the truth value of a claim um the the uh yeah the first thing that i that so this is something which we might do in future is the reliability of source where uh, is this a caption or information coming from is this a reliable source or not mm -hmm. and um, the second thing would be like to take into consideration timeline how old is the image and how recent is the text so if if obviously the image is like 10 20 years before is taken 10 20 years before and the caption mm -hmm. or the post is like i don't know like last month then obviously there's a strong signal that uh, is it it's out of context or it's some false claim so yeah these are the things out there and the we are not identifying whether it, we are not doing sentiment analysis in any case mm. we are not saying whether that that this is a positive or this is a negative sentence no that is not what we are doing what we are doing is we take an image and uh, we basically have two captions and we identify whether uh, these two captions uh, one of the two, one of these two captions is out of context with respect to image. Mm. So that that is the main task that we're trying to. So the the formulation is a bit different from standard machine learning tasks that basically you see out there. You take an image and you take two texts and you mm. identify whether it's out of these two captions are out of context with respect to this image. Yeah, exactly. I was about yeah. to say, right, that uh, it's not really sentiment analysis just for yeah. the text, right, but with respect to the image, right? Hey, is exactly. it like, does it correlate, right? Or is it like negatively Ex correlates, basically? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Cool. Sounds good. Um, so how, how do you feel? Um, what What's going to be like the biggest uh, uh, challenge for the next part, right? Because you mentioned it's like a future work, right? And the more complicated like algorithm, right? Because like now we have a data set. So mm -hmm. what do you foresee like the biggest uh, challenge or the biggest bottleneck for the next steps? um so sometimes actually so um, we we haven't made this data set uh public but sometimes um you see because obviously we have a lot of captions talking about politics and and stuff like this mm -hmm. so this uh this depends uh a lot on the timeline from where you collected this data set so mm -hmm. uh 
uh, when I started collecting this data set, I collected basically images from past two or three years. So for the, the this uh, subject politics, I had a lot of text that talked only about Trump, 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 President mm -hmm. Trump did this, President Trump did that. And then I realized, oh, this is this is problematic because this is going to overfit only for, for this person. Mm -hmm. So one of the major challenge was to collect a data set that is diverse enough that spans through a variety of topics and that spans through a variety of identities and people. So mm -hmm. obviously, um and this so first thing is was this and so we basically said let's not collect images for four years let's collect images for 10 years so that mm -hmm. we have like a wide variety of um people in our data set and mm -hmm. yeah and that's yeah that that's something that that we faced during uh, this project yeah, pretty cool. Uh, maybe just a follow up to this direction. Uh, I remember because you mentioned like Trump and politics, right? So it was like quite a mm -hmm. discussions like on Twitter, right? And Twitter even like did ban Trump like at some point, right? Yeah. And uh, what I do remember is that they uh, like they have this connection to um, this. Uh, I'm not sure like uh, uh, group, right? Or like a service that uh, checking um, how valid the claim is, right? Do you know if this organization or whatever, how is this like structured, if they also providing this data for researchers, right? Because it might be also like an interesting way to, you know, enrich your data with something like bigger than that, right? So like Twitter and Facebook, I think they have it like kind of like as a big part of their current uh, problems, right? In terms of misinformation. So is data available for researchers or it's kind of- This data will be, will be out soon. We're just mm. like uh, uh, in the final steps of releasing this data okay. set. Like I think in coming weeks, we, we might make an announcement yeah. about the data set release. Yeah. Nice, pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you again for your time, right? And also for sharing, uh, you know, your passion about this like data set and about this problem. It was amazing, at least like for me. So definitely thank you for, for your time. Thanks for having me. Have a good evening. Good evening.